Hey guys, it's me, Panto6, or you can just call me Derek, or Barnhart, whatever you know me as, as or whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, today I want to do a update, uh, so it'll be sort of a let's talk. Uh, now, the thing I'm going to talk about, don't worry, I'm not going to preach. I promise it won't happen, and I'm not going to tell you to jump in. But if you want to, I'll be here to talk to you about it. Um, the thing I want to talk about today is faith. Now, people have known me for a long time um, as an atheist, and I, I have been an atheist for almost 10 years, and prior to that I was always in church. So uh, my grandpa, my grandma would always call us first thing Sunday morning or Wednesday evening, and Sunday night and we'd go to church. I was in Bible school, um, I hung out with church groups, and I also thought about attending a local uh, Christian college back when I was a uh, junior in high school. Now, um, there's some things that happened, of course, um, whenever I was with in church. I met a girl at church, and uh, we had a relationship, but it didn't work out, and uh, I kind of stopped going there for a little while, and I got back into it because I wanted to, you know, I wanted to be a preacher. Um, that's what I wanted to do, and I had all this other stuff, you know, going on at college. I was in a band. I had two jobs, um, and you know, a bunch of friends. So I never really got to it, and um, that's one thing I want to talk about too is. Uh, taking things for granted because you never know um, that you're missing something until it's completely gone and that's like a, my grandparents my grandparents were like superheroes to me um, especially my grandpa he was a you know a war vet for the Korean War um, he never talked about it he was a, he was a quiet man uh, he was a preacher um, he told me the story about when um, I think it went as he was in a train cart or something like that in the Korean War, and he saw a uh, Korean soldier um, nestled into this train cart, and he had one of those little Gideon the Tiny Bibles um, that some preachers will hand out for free, and I think that's where it started for him, and um, he and my grandma was together for well over almost 50-some years, and um, like I said before, you know, he always wanted us to go to church. Um, you always see him, you know, on the front porch of his house with a guitar, um, singing church hymnals. He had his own uh, story, which I don't know if it was his story, but I always liked it. And um, the story, anytime I hear it, it just poof, makes me feel really sad. Like, a uh, now, it, like, it used to make me sad, but now it's kind of like a bittersweet kind of sad, if that makes sense. And anyways, um, whenever my grandpa died, he thought I was, you know, saved, I got baptized, I got baptized in the swimming pool. She really didn't care too much for that. And the preacher that helped baptize, it was pretty much a thief for the most part. And my grandpa, you know, heard this from uh, one preacher to another, and he tried to warn um, the, the church about what's going on, and they basically shunned him for the most part. Um, it was pretty, pretty messed up. Um, but, you know, I stopped caring about it. I, you know, I just jumped out of it. And when you're in college, um, or any type of school, um, and you, you know, you have all these things, like, you learn all these crazy things about science, um, how the world is created, uh, and I, I'm, I love science, I love science fiction, I love anything to do with science, Neil deGrasse Ty Tyson, um, uh, <coughs> whoever, <laughs> the other guys, the other scientists, was, um, people I looked up to, I watched Cosmos, I read the books, uh, you know, I wanted to know everything I could about, you know, some sciences. I'm not good at the science that involves math or chemistry, because I haven't done that, but um, space, astronomy, uh, 
aliens, you name it. Um, that's something I really love. Um, it wasn't until I lost my grandpa, um, until when I completely dropped out, because you know I was in a relationship that just was awful. It was a terrible relationship, and um, uh, now that's after my grandma, grandpa died, and my grandma, um, she died about two or three years after the fact. Um, my grandpa died right when he was 80 years old, and my grandma, I think, she, man, I, I want to say she was 82, but I'm not sure. It's been a while. But after he died, um, I kind of just went on my own. Uh, I didn't go to church. Um, I stopped doing it. This was back in 2008. Um, you know, I was, after that, I was moved out of my parents' house, and I was live with my friend Jay, um, and, you know, I started drinking heavily all the time, every day, I'd get, I'd go, you know, Buffalo Wild Wings, then I would go to, um, a bar, pick up a six-pack, then after I drank the six-pack and the two drafts from Buffalo Wild Wings, I would go to my, uh, sociology class, and after I got out of sociology class, I went and got more drinks, and I spent, like, one time, like, 400-some dollars um, on alcohol. And uh, I used to drink all the time. Like, my my uh, my parents and everything, not my parents, my dad and a lot of and his family um, have problems with alcoholism. And I'm not saying that uh, they all do. Some do. And there's some in my mom's side of the family has it too, and um, it's really easy to get hooked on alcohol. I, like, I'll drink every once in a while. Don't get me wrong. I liked it. I liked it. Um, I'm a big fan of uh, apple teenies uh, or some kind of fruity drink. I figured if I'm going to drink something, I might as well get diabetes. <laughs> so that's my train of thought, which I probably probably shouldn't be thinking that since you know I've got all this, but. Um, now I used to do that, uh, smoking weed, like all the time, not all the time, but sometimes when I would get it, um, it was just stupid, stupid, stupid stuff, and, um, you know, you know, I had this terrible relationship, the girl cheated on me like four times or something like that, probably more, ended that, my grandma died, um, I sit at her deathbed for, I think she got put in a hospice for like two weeks, and um, it was rough. It was rough. I was there. The whole family was there for to see her make her last um, breath, and it it was rough. I, I know that. Like there's there's a my grandpa was it was rough too, but like I don't know. I, I was a pallbearer for both um, cases. Uh, also, I was a pallbearer. Um, for my friend uh, Jim Bob, or yeah, I'm not gonna get the full name, and his dad died. I believe I was a pallbearer for that, and his dad was a great, great guy, awesome. But where I'm trying to get at, like, that was kind of one of the things that stopped me. Like, faith, uh, I was done with it. Um, also, my mom, she had a brain aneurysm. And it almost killed her, and it was it was awful. Uh, it, was, it was crazy, crazy, crazy stuff. Um, but for ten years, um, almost ten years, uh, you know, that's what I believed in. I, I didn't believe in God anymore. And if people would say, "Hey, why don't you go to church with me?" and I would say, "You know, fuck off," or "No, I don't want anything to do with that." Sorry about that. But anyways, um, some of the things, <laughs> um, that's some of the stuff that, you know, escalated into that. And, you know, I've had problems with my dad. Uh, we fought um, just one thing after another. It always seemed like the world was, like, plotting against me. But sometimes I'd have really awesome days. Sometimes I didn't. Um, you know, I had a nice job. Uh and I thought I was going somewhere with my life. We was in, I was in a band. We was doing good. We had uh, <laughs> a company called Beast Attire that um, sponsored us. Um, 
and I loved it. Loved everything. We played shows every weekend. Um, sometimes even more than that, but things just kind of went down from there. Um, and, you know, then I finally met Nikki, and um, for f four years now, um, we've been great. Um, we've been awesome. We've had great things uh, um, happen for us. And, you know, she said yes to me after I gave her uh, this beautiful ring. She said yes. It was amazing. One of the best days of my life. And, you know, the bad thing about it is <laughs> after we had, like, our troubles, we're still, we're still trying to iron it out. Um, and that got us moved to Illinois. Um, you know, I I thought the world was just crumbling, um, just crumbling under right from under my feet. And you know, it just seemed like nothing could get good. Every time something good would happen, two bad things would happen. Uh, recently, my car broke down, and you know, that's that's another story. But um, we're still looking for jobs. But we, the good news is we have a place. Um, and I hate to admit it, but it's government housing. But it's a place until I can get, you know, Nikki and I can get uh, jobs or maybe something great will happen. That's where I want to go f stop right there. I'm going to stop right at that moment. And I'm going to tell you a totally new story. When I got here, um, Nikki's, uh, Nikki's family, um, they go to church, and they invited me to church, um, and I was kind of, I didn't really want to go at all, I didn't, I, I just didn't, because I didn't care about it, um, and it, it was, it's like, it was, it, it was almost the equivalent of, like, putting a cat in a bathtub full of water, the cat struggling to get out. That's me. I didn't want to go. I didn't care. Um, I've never really pushed my um, views at the time towards other people. I never said you couldn't, uh, you shouldn't be Christian. You couldn't, shouldn't believe in this. Uh, science is the way. Now, I'm sure I've had some arguments um, with my friends about stuff like that, but I never really went out of my way um, and do it. And I always used to get really mad, really, really mad at. Um, Anything to do with religion. I, I didn't want anything to do with it. Um, I always thought, you know, that there's a lot of scandals. It's, it's you know, corrupt. Uh, we don't know this and this. But <clears throat> then I went to church one day, and this is the weirdest thing. So I walked in with her family, and I sit down at one of the church pews. And it was one of these lessons the preacher was telling was something my grandpa uh, preached a long time ago, and I used to hear that, you know, all the cert <laughs> church hymns, um, the songs, and there's just one song. It's just like, I, I don't know what happened, but I was, I felt like guilty, you know, I felt disgusted with myself, and I just, you know, I, I don't know what happened. I, I kind of felt like, um, you know, something was tugging on me, and it was weird, I because usually I push things like that away. Um, so the preacher, you know, I told him what's going on in my life and everything. Um, this was after the service, and, you know, they started praying for me. So about a week or so later, <laughs> things still wasn't getting better. I was pretty much at the point where I wanted to say, I want to move back home nothing's working out and so I went to I went out looking for some more jobs uh, put in resumes and I stopped because I just felt weird I just really felt wrong so I stopped in the middle of this field um, it was like a road middle of nowhere if you've been to Illinois in my area there's nothing here really it's just it's flat it's farmland and not much there so I get out of my car and I have this huge conversation with God and at that moment like I felt really good about it too I was you know I bet you I was standing out there for 20 some minutes 
I probably would have looked ri- like ridiculous from other people, like but nobody really drove by because nobody's in that area. Um, just me, the field, and uh, God. That's it. So you know, I started talking, uh, praying, and you know this, this is really weird for me. And finally, um, I asked for forgiveness and. Um, I accepted God as uh, my uh, personal Savior. And ever since then, it's actually felt really, really good. Um, It's something that has been missing uh, for the longest time. I kind of felt like, I don't know, it's like if you lost your code or something, and uh, there's my code, I found it. I'm not comparing God to a code. Well, it does kind of sound like it did. (laughs) <laughs> the point is, is um, it, it felt really good. It felt right. I, I, I felt like that missing piece of the puzzle was um, put in there, and I just feel a whole lot better. You know, I and, and my friends kind of think it's weird, like um, of me. Like I went to Ohio. This was uh, three or four weeks ago for a colonoscopy. Um, and so I'm still working out that crap. <laughs> My friend Jay he takes me to um, some Mexican restaurant, and basically, <laughs> again, Carlos said, "You know, it's pray." <laughs> he said, um, "Cause I'm not good at praying. I'm not. Whenever I pray, it's like talking to somebody else. They're like, hey, God, what's up? Uh, how about them Bengals?" <laughs> But no, I, I looked at my friend Jay and I was like, uh, uh, thank you for this delicious Mexican food that my friend is paying for. <laughs> He's like, dude, have you, like, that sounded like a prayer from uh, Fast and the Furious. I guess it was a dude in that movie is like, um, <laughs> thank you for cars or something like that. But it, it's actually it's, it's actually kind of weird, and I'm still trying. I'm still working things out. Um, I still believe that science and religion can kind of coexist, even the things I believe um, in science can, and and what I believe in the Bible they contradict each other. But I think you know the Bible is, does have a lot of stories in it, and it's basically up to you to um, pull them apart. Um, and figure out, you know, what's, what's, what it means. Um, I'm not saying the Bible has false stories, but, this, you know, the Jonah and the well and uh, stuff like that, it's, um, it's still kind of far-fetched for me. And I know it's, it sounds really rude and I shouldn't be thinking like that, but I'm thinking, you know, I still believe in the Big Bang. I believe, you know, in evolution and now that I have put God into the equation, things are starting to become more complicated. More complicated. And you'll think, I think about it all the time. Um, and I shouldn't. It's, it'll tear you apart. If, if you start thinking about it like I do, um, don't do it. Don't do it. It's terrible. Um, but no, I think at this point, though, I'm more content in my life. Even though the current situation, I don't have a job, um, but I'm working for that. And I, I'd love to start own my own business eventually, but um, if if uh, you guys are watching this and um, I somehow um, helped you guys, you know, know what it's like to do this, um, you can get a hold of me. Uh, just let me know. Uh, Facebook me, uh, comments below, and I'll talk to you the best I can. I'm not going to preach. I'm not going to tell you you should do this or that. But if you have something in your life you think that religion can fix that, jump in. I mean, what's the worst that could happen um, aside from getting blown up or something? But uh, as uh, I'm going to go ahead and end this. Um, Sorry for the long rant, but it's not really a rant. But <laughs> I just wanted to get that out there. But guys, be sure to hit like and subscribe. Um, help me build this channel. 
and hopefully soon I can figure out the business I'm wanting to start. So we'll, we'll talk about that maybe next week. But uh, f right now, I love you guys. And again, be sure to hit like and subscribe, and God bless.